It's no secret that the West wants Traore dead at all cost. What will Africans do if the West attacks their beloved leader Traore? The West underestimates the power of African nations. Historically, when awareness was limited, Western powers managed to topple governments and assassinate leaders with impunity. However, today the world has shifted and so have African attitudes. They refuse to allow the West to harm a leader who embodies Pan-African ideals. But to what extent will the West go and how is Traore ensuring his protection? In recent months, Burkina Faso's president, Ibrahim Traore, has faced numerous attempts on his life. In response to these threats, Traore has implemented stringent security measures modeled after Russian strategies. These steps are designed to protect not only his safety, but also the stability of his administration. But why is his life under threat? Ibrahim Traore's ascent to power has been met with both admiration and animosity, painting a vivid picture of a leader caught in the crosshairs of hope and hostility. His vision for Burkina Faso, a vision of self-sufficiency, dignity, and genuine independence, resonates deeply with the people, yet stirs unease among those who stand to lose from the dismantling of the old guard. Traore's popularity, both domestically and abroad, stems from his unwavering commitment to lifting Burkina Faso out of the shadows cast by colonialism and neo-colonial influence. His policies, aimed at bolstering local industries, reducing reliance on foreign aid, and fostering a spirit of Pan-Africanism, have invigorated a populace long weary of economic subjugation and political instability. However, such bold steps often come at a steep price. Ibrahim Traoré's rise to power has been full of bold ideas and big changes aimed at improving Burkina Faso. However, these very actions have also made him a target for attacks. His vision for an independent and prosperous Burkina Faso threatens the interests of powerful foreign nations and local elites who have long benefited from the exploitation of the country's resources and people. The attacks on his life are not just random acts of angry opponents, they are well-planned actions by a mix of actors trying to keep their hold on power. Historically, Burkina Faso, like many African countries, has been influenced by powerful global forces seeking control. The nation's wealth and natural resources, like gold and cotton, have drawn the attention of foreign companies and governments for decades. These external players have partnered with local elites, creating a system that hinders true progress and independence. Traoré's rise, with his commitment to ending this dependency, has shaken up this established order. One of Traoré's boldest moves has been to take control of key industries, especially mining. By renegotiating contracts to ensure that more profits stay in Burkina Faso, he has challenged the usual way of doing things. This has upset powerful multinational corporations and their home governments, who are not used to such resistance from a leader of a developing nation. The shift in African attitudes and the strong support for leaders like Ibrahim Traoré demonstrate a new era of resilience and self-determination. The West's traditional methods of control are increasingly being challenged, and the future will likely see African nations asserting their independence with greater confidence and unity. Ibrahim Traoré's economic policies have significantly impacted foreign and local entities, leading many to undermine his administration. His efforts to reduce reliance on foreign aid and strengthen local industries have caused considerable tension. Foreign aid is often used as a means of exerting influence, and Traoré's refusal of aid that comes with conditions has angered those who see it as a control mechanism. This stance has labeled him a radical in the eyes of the global community, increasing the threats against him. Within Burkina Faso, the challenges are equally intense. Loyalists of the previous regime and various political factions opposed to Traoré's reforms are actively working against him. These groups, often supported by foreign interests, aim to destabilize his government through propaganda, bribery, and violence. The failed coup attempts highlight the lengths these factions will go to regain power, showcasing the unstable political climate in Burkina Faso and the fragile nature of Traoré's position. Local elites who have thrived on corruption and patronage view Traoré's anti-corruption campaigns and calls for accountability as direct threats. His efforts to eliminate corruption and promote transparent governance disrupt established networks of influence and privilege, creating powerful domestic enemies. Traoré's foreign policy has also been controversial. His support for Pan-Africanism and stronger ties with other African nations pursuing similar paths of independence has been viewed with suspicion by Western powers. 
By building alliances with leaders who share his vision, Traoré has created a united front against neo-colonial pressures. While this is empowering for Africa, it has further alienated those who prefer a divided Africa that is easier to control. The security situation in Burkina Faso adds another layer of difficulty. The rise of militant groups in the Sahel region, often with external backing, creates an environment of instability and fear. These groups exploit discontent and socioeconomic disparities, posing a significant threat to Traoré's government. His efforts to address extremism's root causes through development and inclusive governance face resistance as external actors benefit from the chaos and use it as a pretext for intervention. Traoré's safety is a constant concern. His security team must remain vigilant against assassination attempts and coordinated attacks. Intelligence reports have uncovered numerous plots against him, orchestrated by a mix of local and foreign actors. The complexity of these plots underscores the high stakes involved and the determination of his enemies. Despite these challenges, Traoré draws strength from the unwavering support of the Burkina Bay people. His grassroots connections and genuine concern for their welfare have built a strong base of support that has so far resisted his adversaries' efforts. The people's belief in his vision acts as both his shield and his sword, allowing him to move forward despite the dangers. Traoré's ability to communicate his vision and rally the masses has been crucial to his resilience. His speeches, filled with messages of hope, resilience, and self-determination, deeply resonate with a population long yearning for change. This connection with the people makes it difficult for his enemies to turn public opinion against him despite their best efforts. Moreover, Traoré has strategically built alliances with other African leaders who share his vision. In the grand narrative of African liberation, the story of Ibrahim Traoré is still unfolding. His life, marked by courage and conviction, serves as a beacon of hope for those who envision an Africa free from external control. However, it also underscores the significant risks faced by those who pursue such a vision. Historically, African leaders who dared to assert true independence and self-determination have encountered similar dangers. Patrice Lumumba of Congo, Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso, and Muammar Gaddafi of Libya were leaders whose lives were violently cut short as they challenged neo-colonial control. Their stories are stark reminders of the perils Traoré faces as he walks a path fraught with peril. Patrice Lumumba, the first Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo, is one of the most notable examples. Lumumba's vision for a united, independent Congo, free from the exploitative grip of foreign powers, made him a significant threat to the established order. His tenure was marked by efforts to gain full control over the country's rich natural resources, which had long been plundered by colonial and corporate interests. Lumumba's refusal to align with Western powers during the Cold War and his appeal to the Soviet Union for assistance sealed his fate. In 1961, Lumumba was arrested, tortured, and ultimately assassinated with the involvement of both Belgian authorities and the CIA. His death symbolized the extreme measures taken to prevent African nations from slipping out of Western control. Thomas Sankara, often called Africa's Che Guevara, is another tragic figure in the history of African liberation. As the president of Burkina Faso, Sankara implemented sweeping reforms aimed at reducing poverty, fighting corruption, and promoting gender equality. His policies included land redistribution, nationalizing key industries, and rejecting foreign aid, which he viewed as a form of neocolonialism. Sankara's vision of self-sufficiency and his bold rhetoric against Western imperialism made him a target. In 1987, he was assassinated in a coup orchestrated by his close ally, Blaise Compaoré, who had the backing of foreign interests opposed to Sankara's radical changes. Sankara's assassination underscored the dangers faced by leaders who challenge international norms and local power structures. Muammar Gaddafi of Libya presents a more complex narrative. Gaddafi came to power in 1969 through a military coup that ousted the Western-aligned monarchy. Over the years, he pursued a vision of Pan-Africanism and sought to reduce Western influence in Africa. Gaddafi used Libya's oil wealth to fund various African liberation movements and proposed ambitious projects aimed at unifying the continent. However, his regime also became increasingly autocratic, leading to significant internal opposition. In 2011, amid the Arab Spring, a NATO-led intervention purportedly to protect civilians resulted in Gaddafi's overthrow and brutal killing. 
The Western power's involvement in Gaddafi's demise highlighted the geopolitical stakes in Africa and the lengths to which external forces would go to protect their interests. These historical precedents show a clear pattern. African leaders who pursue genuine independence and challenge the global status quo often meet violent ends. Ibrahim Traoré's situation bears eerie similarities to these past leaders. His efforts to nationalize industries, reduce foreign dependency, and foster regional unity echo the policies that led to the demise of Lumumba, Sankara, and Gaddafi. This historical context amplifies the risks Ibrahim Traoré faces and underscores the precarious nature of his position. The question now is how far external forces will go to attack Traoré. The most recent attempt on his life starkly reminded everyone of the volatile situation he faces as the leader of Burkina Faso. Gunfire erupted near the presidential residence, sending shockwaves through the capital, Ouagadougou. This brazen attack not only caused immediate alarm, but also ignited public protests, with Traoré's supporters pouring into the streets to show their unwavering support for his government. These incidents highlight the urgent need for robust security measures to protect Traoré and stabilize his administration. The night of the attack was tense as shots rang out near the presidential residence. It became clear that this was not just a random act of violence, but a targeted attempt on Traoré's life. Security forces quickly responded, engaging the assailants in a firefight that lasted several minutes. The attackers managed to escape, leaving behind a scene of chaos and fear. This attack was the latest in a series of attempts to destabilize Traoré's government and eliminate him as a political threat. The immediate aftermath saw a surge of support for Traoré. Thousands of Burkina Bay citizens took to the streets of Ouagadougou, chanting slogans and waving flags in solidarity with their president. The spontaneous gathering was a powerful testament to the deep connection Traoré has with his people. Many of the protesters vowed to defend his vision for a new Burkina Faso, free from the shackles of corruption and foreign exploitation. This public outpouring of support was both a show of unity and a warning to those who seek to harm Traoré that the people stand firmly behind their leader. These public demonstrations underscore the immediate dangers Traoré faces. The assassination attempt was not an isolated incident, but part of a broader pattern of threats that have dogged his presidency from the start. Each attack serves as a reminder of the precarious nature of his position and the powerful forces arrayed against him. The urgency of the situation calls for enhanced security measures to protect not only Traore, but also the stability of Burkina Faso as a whole. Traore's leadership has been characterized by a series of bold reforms aimed at transforming Burkina Faso into a self-sufficient and prosperous nation. However, these reforms have also made him many enemies. By challenging the entrenched interests of foreign corporations and local elites, Traoré has put himself in the crosshairs of those who stand to lose from his policies. The recent attack is a stark reminder that these adversaries are willing to go to great lengths to stop him. The need for robust security measures cannot be overstated. In response to these escalating threats, Ibrahim Traoré has adopted a series of security measures drawing inspiration from Russian methods known for their effectiveness in high-risk environments. His approach is multifaceted, combining increased personal security, advanced surveillance, and enhanced military capabilities to ensure his protection and stabilize his administration. These steps are crucial for maintaining his leadership and safeguarding Burkina Faso's sovereignty. Traoré's multifaceted security strategy involves not only physical protection, but also proactive measures to prevent future attacks. By bolstering his security team and employing advanced technologies, he aims to create a secure environment that allows him to continue his transformative agenda without constant threats to his life. Traoré has significantly expanded his security team, ensuring he is constantly surrounded by highly trained personnel. This team includes experts in close protection, counter-surveillance, and crisis management. By recruiting former military and intelligence officers with specialized skills, Traoré ensures his immediate environment is secure. These security personnel are trained to anticipate and neutralize threats before they can materialize, providing a robust shield against potential attacks. To monitor potential threats in real time, Traoré has implemented cutting-edge surveillance technologies. These systems include a network of cameras, drones, and electronic monitoring devices strategically placed around key locations. The integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms 
allows for the real-time analysis of surveillance data, identifying suspicious activities and alerting security teams instantly. This proactive approach enables TrialRace security team to respond swiftly to emerging threats, minimizing the risk of successful attacks. Understanding the importance of a well-equipped security force, TrialRay has prioritized acquiring advanced military hardware. This includes modern firearms, armored vehicles, and communication systems. By upgrading the equipment used by Burkina Faso's security forces, TrialRay ensures they are better prepared to counter sophisticated threats. Additionally, training programs in collaboration with international partners enhance the skills of security personnel, ensuring they can effectively use the new technology and equipment. A key aspect of TrialRay's security strategy is strengthening Burkina Faso's intelligence capabilities. This involves enhancing the collection, analysis, and dissemination of intelligence to preemptively identify and mitigate threats. By fostering collaboration between different intelligence agencies, both domestic and international, TrialRay aims to create a comprehensive network that provides timely and accurate information. This intelligence-driven approach allows for informed decision-making and more effective security operations. Ensuring the confidentiality and integrity of communication is vital for TrialRay's security. He has invested in secure communication systems that protect against eavesdropping and cyber attacks. Encrypted communication devices and secure networks enable TrialRay and his team to coordinate effectively without the risk of interception. This is particularly important given the sophisticated nature of modern threats, which often include cyber components aimed at disrupting communication and gathering intelligence. TrialRay has also placed a strong emphasis on fostering loyalty and professionalism within the military. By building strong relationships with key military leaders and ensuring that the armed forces are well compensated and respected, TrialRay aims to secure their unwavering support. Regular training exercises, morale-boosting initiatives, and transparent leadership contribute to a cohesive and loyal military force. This unity is crucial in preventing coups and ensuring that the military acts as a stabilizing force in the country. Recognizing the transnational nature of many security threats, Trial Ray has sought to strengthen regional and international collaboration. This includes partnerships with neighboring countries to share intelligence and coordinate security operations. Trial Ray has also engaged with international allies to gain support for his security initiatives. By participating in regional security forums and alliances, Burkina Faso can benefit from collective security measures and international expertise. Traoré also understands that his safety is closely linked to the support of the Burkina Bay people. His efforts to communicate effectively with the populace and address their concerns are crucial in maintaining their backing. By fostering a strong connection with the citizens and promoting transparency, Traoré ensures that his leadership is supported by a united and vigilant society. He has initiated community engagement programs to foster public trust and cooperation. By involving local communities in security efforts and addressing their concerns, Traoré aims to create a vigilant and supportive citizenry. Public awareness campaigns educate citizens about potential threats and encourage them to report suspicious activities. This grassroots involvement acts as an additional layer of security, making it harder for adversaries to operate undetected. Addressing the root causes of instability is a long-term component of Traoré's security strategy. By implementing economic and social reforms, he aims to reduce poverty, unemployment, and inequality, which are often exploited by adversaries to foment unrest. Development programs focused on education, healthcare, and infrastructure improve the overall well-being of the population, reducing the appeal of extremist ideologies and criminal activities. A more stable and prosperous society provides a solid foundation for sustainable security. Preparing for potential crises is essential for Traoré's security. He has established a comprehensive crisis management framework that includes rapid response teams, emergency communication systems, and evacuation plans. Regular drills and simulations ensure that all stakeholders are prepared to act swiftly and effectively in the event of an emergency. This preparedness not only enhances Traoré's security, but also strengthens national resilience against various threats. Effective communication is a key element of Traoré's security strategy. By maintaining transparent and strategic communication with the public, Traoré can counter disinformation and build trust. Public relations campaigns highlight his achievements and reinforce his commitment to national security 
and development. By controlling the narrative and engaging with the media, Traore can mitigate the impact of propaganda and maintain public confidence in his leadership. Let's end with one question. What are Traore's motives for the future that scare external powers so much that they want to assassinate him? All he wants is to initiate job creation, reduce poverty, and improve living conditions. Do you think these are enough reasons to make a nation hate him? Is caring about people's interests a valid reason to attack someone? Let us know in the comments section. Do you see this as an attack on Traore or all Africans? If you want to watch more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.